Well, the old adage, never short a dull market. So or do we have a dull market? Let's start there. We have a lot of signals here. It's gonna be a super technical video. Let's get into it. So we can just see our range right up here on the ES and we are building this flag. Now, no matter how we like it, we have two dojis up here. Dojis are signs of uncertainty. They don't tell you anything but that you have a sign of uncertainty. What I would note is this little level right here and our inability to get over that. What we're gonna do is drill into this in a little bit, go down to an hourly and get into this. Then we have to look at the NQ and look what's going on there. See the breakouts and some of the commodity names so we can talk about which ones we should be buying, which ones we should be selling. And then we have to look at some of these stocks and which ones are actually railing. I mean, you had certain sectors in the market today that just lifted all day. They're just not sectors people were expecting. We're hearing the consumer's week, go look at the XLY. We're gonna get into this and what's going on there. So if we look at this area in here, we can see that we're really convoluted. We've got a couple key levels in here that we're gonna go over, but let's just talk about the ES in this level. And I think it's important for us to look at the internals of it as well, meaning percentages over the five, the 20, the 50, and the 200. Let's just blow this up and see what's really going on here. So we popped over that level. And we've come down and you can see where these are marked off where well, this is Friday, 11 o'clock, where we had that sell off only on quad witching to bounce and then come back, come all the way down Monday at three in the morning. And then we never came near it again. Hit this like a cat in a hot tin roof, bonk, bonk, bonk. And this is where we're at. Now, the question really is, is this telling us anything? To me, it is. And I'll walk you through it in a second, but I want to show you this on a, on a four hour. So if I look at this on a four hour, what I see is a lot more dojis. I see the shake and bake that you had here at two o'clock in the morning. Then you had a doji, then you had another one inside that. And then look at this four hour close right here. And people will say to me, do you really look that close at all this? I do, I do look this close at it. But when I look at this, that's pretty telling to me. So if I go down to these four hour bars, I only really have a couple up here that even came close to closing like that. So for those that are super technical, you're gonna to wanna to watch how we respond to this closing bar that happened on the four hour on the ES at this time. It'll close obviously at six, but then you know you kick off again. But if you watch this, what really happened? Every dip was bought. Whether we wanna believe that or not, it was. And what I like about what you're seeing is this. You hit the high of that level. Now remember, that level is right here. And again, I said this was gonna be a super technical video. I'm trying to keep them all in format because what I'm realizing is when I change topics, people seem to get lost a little bit. So if it's technical, then we're gonna stay technical, macro, et cetera. Trading videos I will do, because I do get a lot of requests for them, but I'm gonna keep them separated out, which I think is a good idea. Uh, and then certain people will like those, other people won't. But as always, I read your comments, so please drop them below. Even when you call me Boomer, I read them. So if you take a look here and how we're acting, right? But what is the difference? Like, what is the difference, Boomer? Okay, eh, so they're stepping us up. See, the one thing about these kinds of levels that you always have to look for is the following. Are they just eating up supply up here? And I would suggest that they are. That's what technically this is telling us. They are just riding this line up here and they are eating up supply over and over and over again. When you start taking out these levels, then I'll be a little concerned. But even big names were not dropping today. So if we look here at these, and let's just zoom out again so you can see some of these other levels. If we get into this, you can see right here you have the shelf. When we got near it, we bounced right off of it. And I think that's right around that 5735 level. Couldn't break it, couldn't get above. So you're boxed in, but you never made lower lows. You were constantly being bought today. Whether or not you wanted to believe it or not, you were. And so what we're seeing is we're seeing a lot of people going, oh, I better short. Never short a dull market. I'm the first person to short something, believe me. And the one thing I've learned after years of doing this, if there's not a reason to short, if there's not a reason to go long, don't do anything. Get yourself a nice book. I'm reading a book called Coexistence again. It's about AI. It's actually really good. So what you want to do here is just kind of watch these levels that are marked off. You can screenshot them there and be very lazy and not even mark them yourself. And you want to just make sure that you hold here because even if you break here, do we really have to worry about this? Not so much. Now, there are signs that we do have to work off, and I'll show you in a second here. And if you break this, do you have to worry about getting down to here or down to there? Yeah, there's some of that because if we overlay this on, let's just go to this plane chart, drop it to a daily, and then zoom into this level, what you're going to find is some of these green levels, like the second green level is going to be right where your 22 and your 12 is. And then your 55 is down here right around that 56. So then when we go back to this on the hourly, drop this back to a plane chart, and just zoom in, we know why we have to watch these levels and how they're gonna respond at those levels and why they're so significant. So if we break those, we have an issue. But I would think that if you broke like this 57, I have it around 57.34, somewhere around there, that you could come down, it could be pretty hard. But you need to see that first. Now, let's keep staying on this vein. 
Here we are in the hourly, and I look at RSI, and you can see the RSI here, right? It's all in line. We're just flatlining. The question is, what are you waiting for? It's a good question because you have, what, PCE on Friday, and then you have claims on Thursday. You don't really need any of that GDP. Like, do we really need that to move? You got rid through quad witching. We didn't really do anything. Why is this on a four, though? So this is where it gets kind of interesting to me because on a four, you can see that you're overbought, and then you finally start to crack, and they work you off and then you start to rally again. You're overbought up here. It usually does not go very well if you're overbought on a four hour and you're buying for a very long term. If it's short term and you're trading it around, yeah, but you need to just know where you are. It doesn't mean you have to agree with me or not. I mean, I get it. You saw you were here and now you're here. And if you, you bought here and you held forever, you know, diamond hands, you were good. All right, but then we have something called reality and most people are not gonna diamond hands this, right? Or this. So we just want to see how we're going to act. And we could flatline. You can flat like, like you did here. You could flatline from May and what did we flatline to? 22 days up here before some kind of reckoning. And it's not always the case, but you can. You could, to you could totally do that. You could have some kind of sell off and go from there. We don't see it yet. And I don't know what's going to do it yet. I don't know if they just kind of slowly work this down. So what I tend to do is then I just kind of drop time frames. Like I'll go to a two and say, okay, well, what's it doing? And now what I'm doing is I just Stay with me. I went from a four to a two. I don't you look at a two usually. But what I'm doing is, are they working this off? And they are. They're slowly working that off, right? So that when I go to the hourly, which is what I use, I can just go, oh, they are just, they're flatlined. They're just working this off. So eventually that four hour will come down with the two and the one, which means I could stay here. So we stay on the ES for a second. And then we went to this other chart that I use a lot. Well, let's do it this way. I'll, I'll show you these. I started doing these layouts a little bit more. And I think loading these layouts, it might save me a little more time. And I'm not going to have time to edit this, as I always say. But if we look right here, and this is what I want to show before we go into the NQ and what else is going on, this is stocks above the 5, 20, 50, and 200. Now, if we just note where you're at on these lines, this is where peaks happen on the market. And I'm not going to waste everyone's time by just highlighting the obvious. You have a computer and you can go do it yourself. But you see these levels right here, okay? Like you're right around that 80 today and then you popped over. Uh, you're up here on that high end on the 80, 75 right there. And then you look at the 20 and look at where you're at. Again, you're up there. So you, none of this is oversold. So let's let's not get it twisted about where we are, right? We're, we're not oversold in the least. Again, we're speaking very technical. Saturday's video was macro. If you don't understand the difference, I can't help you. So if you look at this and you see where we're at, you have to understand that you still have to work all this off. That does not mean you have to drop like a stone. You could go sideways. But all those indicators are overbought. They're all at the high end of the range. We know that we're flatlining here on the hourly. And if we went and looked here on the four hour, you'll see this. I don't really use Williams or CCI. I you know some other people do, and that's groovy if you do. Uh, this is fine for me. What I could do here if I wanted more color is I could use rate of change. Now, rate of change is exactly what it is. It tells you the rate of change, right? It's not rocket science. Now, why rate of change is important is because if the rate of change is negative, you can't really go up. But let's take off this RSI for a second and look at this. That's the four hour and you're pointing up. So this is telling you even though you're going flat, that you're pointing up here. This is a four hour reading and you're over the zero line. Drop this to an hour late. You're just riding the lightning. You're riding that zero line. So you could argue that, oh no, we're kind of pointing down. Are we or are we just riding it? I would suggest that we're just riding it for now. And what I do is go back to that four and you can see how we're here and we're actually lifting. So if we look at this, do we really see anything there that is telling us that we have to one, get out, right? Not really, but we are seeing that we're overbought. Okay, so we're aware of that. What would that mean? If we see pullbacks, I'd be more inclined to buy the pullbacks than short the market. One of the big questions I kept getting today and I tried to uh, avoid them was, what are we shorting? What are we shorting? What are, and, and the answer was, there was nothing really worthwhile. Yeah, you could have taken a shot on some of the high flyers and yes, maybe it worked, and, but you're picking up pennies in front of steamroller. When you look at the ES and you look at where you're at from this drop over, and just, just let's just do it even from 930 so you can see what I'm talking about. But here's from 930 over to the close. You move 12 basis points. I mean, there are days to just go fishing, right? Like this may have been one of them. 
28 basis points was the range on the day. So how, how, how much are you really going to sit there and make on days like today? I don't use rate of change on a five minute chart. If you do, that's on you. I just don't do it. Nothing wrong with it. I'm not judging you. I just don't do it. Let's go to this four hour and take a look and we'll start here. And this is where it gets really interesting to me. So what a lot of people don't know is that this is a CTA sell zone. This kicked off on the 19th, and this kicked off when the US dollar Japan and what happened with rates there. But CTA hit a sell signal right here. CTAs are commodity trading accounts. Essentially, they are systemic traders. They use a system, and they all basically use the same system. So when it's time to sell, they sell. When it's time to buy, they buy. And it's charted. You can actually go and see how much there is to sell, how much there is to buy, et cetera, et cetera. And what happens at certain prices at this price they sell. And what we're seeing right here is that level is holding very nicely, isn't it? So we broke on the 19th. We all know what this date was. This was CPI month over month. And then we start to sell down, tries to rally. We have never gotten over this level. This is your CTA sell zone. Okay, that is where they were net sellers. From my perspective, we got near it and dropped like a stone, tried again, dropped like a stone, and now here we are. But we're getting tighter and tighter. So on a grander scale, are we getting tighter in here? I don't have an answer to that. I, I think you are, but you're so far apart. Like, what are you going to wait? Like, October for the low? So you know, it's it's kind of silly to say, but I would, I would suggest that, right? Like, just let this thing sort itself out. Where are you? Rate of change. As long as rate of change is positive, you're not going down, guys. They're trying to short when rate of change is positive. You know, you might as well just make a donation to St. Jude's. Now, you look here in the hourly, and I want to go through this because this is sticking out to me. See how I'm under right now? So what I don't want is I don't want that undercut here. And I certainly don't want an undercut of Monday's low on rate of change. So I will be watching this because I wouldn't want something like that. Now, what I tend to do with this stuff is I will mark that like it's right here, and then I will add an alert to it. So yeah, Yes, I do put alerts on indicators and oscillators. I know, mind blowing. But what that will tell me is if it's going on and I'm doing 10 different things, right? I'll know and they'll be like, oh, okay, well, we're hitting a lower low, you know, and then that correlates with this, like, geez, do I, you know, what are we doing here? And then that might give me more indication. But if we look at that CTA level on the hourly, and then we look at this minor support, which was right here, and then resistance, and then resistance, 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 and these are where your moving averages are. So if we drill into this again, and we look at this, you can see right in here. Please comment on this video. What I'm trying to do, if you can tell, is one's more macro that we did on Saturdays because we had the time. This is more technical, more tactical to get you through tomorrow. And that's why I'm spending the amount of time that I am on this. And we'll get to the sectors that are actually breaking. So once we see this and we see how this is playing out, right, that makes life pretty easy. What I would say, again, is never short a dull market. You're in this range. You're not breaking it. But are you really falling down through it the same way at the same trajectory? Not really. No. You hit it and, and that was it. And now you're just kind of like, eh, we're just going sideways. So what's really going to be the impetus here to get us down? I don't have an answer to that. What I would say is this, we're flatlining here on the RSI. We could talk about this yellow line, which I don't use, but I know people want to use it. They like the trading wheels of it. There's nothing wrong with that. And I could see where we are up here as well. It's not great, right? It, it, it isn't. And you can see where that led to here. And we can see where that led to here. And it's not, it's not ideal long-term. It usually means there's some kind of sell coming. I mean, Let's, let's, let's not delude ourselves about where we are when I'm saying that never should a dull market. Would you be better off buying every time the RSI on the four hour cracks 30 or cracks 70, right? Depends on your trading style, frankly. But if you were longer term, yeah, every time that this broke, just spray and pray, you'd be better off, right? Okay, it's pretty, it's not rocket science. It doesn't happen very often. Maybe at four or five times, but that's it. But when you're up here, you can stay here for a long time like you did here and grind higher. So we can hit highs and still be grinding up here. So I don't want it to be a be all end all. What I want it to do is I want it to be a guide for us. That's all this is, is a guide. But when we look at that CTA sell zone up there, this minor support and where those moving averages are, it coincides perfectly with what's going on. Absolutely perfectly with what's going on. Now let's get into the sectors that are moving and the sectors that are not. Now there are certain themes that are breaking out here and we're just gonna go through them. If people are seeing Tesla do Tesla things and break out, right? And why is this breaking out? So I, I have my reasons on why I think that this is setting up to break out. It does not matter, it is, you're into the gap. If we do the simplest of things, I'm gonna take this line off for a second. 
a bunch of people that were trading this today. Congratulations in the community. They did pretty well with it. If we look at these levels, what we've been talking about is once you're in and you're over, you're over. This is from the peak. This is your anchored VWAP from here. And this is what you want to fo focus on. What I like about this more than anything is once you're over 280, 270, really, it's, it's a wrap. Now, why is this moving? This is where it gets really interesting to me. Look at Amazon and what Amazon's. And then all of a sudden you realize that some of the top holdings in the XLY, well, if you didn't know this, you do now. XLY top holdings, do we know what they are? Okay, go look at Amazon, go look at Tesla. Look at what's happening with XLY. I thought we were in a recession. None of this is acting like a recession, none of it. I'm gonna get into it in another video, but there are six core things to look at and none of them are saying recession. Like, I'll say it again. So when you see this, that's why you're lifting. I think Tesla's going for a couple of reasons. One could be their energy component that no one's looking at. Also the proximity of where their energy component is in regards to what's happening with data centers. Texas is probably gonna be the biggest place in the country, if not the world for data centers. If we take a look here, XLY is breaking out and then you start looking at those names. Well, a lot of these names like ELF were actually green today. Alton, not so much, but a lot of those names are starting to see some kind of interest. Starbucks, you're starting to see these charts. They're not really breaking down anymore, are they? Even Nike, when you look at that, that news that hit, you're kind of sideways there, but go and take a look at some of these retail names. They are starting to hold in there and it is getting somewhat interesting. And I think it's important for us to note that XLY is moving. Take a look at XLC, okay, you're sitting up there, but if you go to FDN, which is a little different, right? It's internet index fund, but go look at some of those names that are in there. Here's top three holdings, Amazon and Net Bookings. And you go look at those names, Annette hit new highs. Bookings on fire, right? So, and people say, well, it's also, you know, the weak dollar. So you have the weak dollar. The weak dollar makes us want to what? Travel because then we feel rich. But then you go look at Expedia and you would say, well, that makes sense. How about Airbnb? Well, that might make sense too, right? And this all becomes connected. People think that Uber fits in there. I don't seem to think about it that way, but Airbnb certainly does to that extent. I really wouldn't look at it till he gets up there. So we start connecting those dots and you start realizing that FDN's doing what it's doing, right? And then you can look at XLC, which is kind of fading a little bit. Then we go look at IGV. And then you can go look at those names and see what's in common there. And then you're getting into the oracles of the world, right? Which are just basically trading sideways more than anything else. They're not really breaking down, are they? You look at now that's hitting all time highs, okay? You have sectors of this market that are holding in there very, very nicely. XLF is just sitting there building. So what I think is important for us is that when we look at this stuff like KR and go, oh, it's not moving. Well, is it just not moving right now or is it done? And then we look at things like TLT today after the bond auctions, which is the 20 year, and we can see how that held in here all day long. What I think is important to do here is to understand that you're going to have rotation within rotation. And I don't see anything out there that's telling us that we're gonna absolutely crash anytime soon. I do see that we are overbought. It is a concern that we are overbought, but do you see anything out there? If you do, comment below. One of the things I will point out is that the XBI move is gonna be overrated for what this is. XBI is dropping because Lilly is in a fight here with NVO over the cost of this drug. And what Lilly's gonna do is crack NVO's skull by basically going out there and cutting costs. That's why VKTX is getting smoked today, right? Because people are saying, okay, well, this drug that we thought they were, you know, we made our model, our model said they were gonna get 500 a shot. Now you go out there and get these weird HIMS ads Somehow they're in my algorithm, thank you, Mark Zuckerberg, that, you know, 200 bucks a shot. So all of a sudden, the margins on that product, whether it's good, bad, and different, are completely irrelevant. Now we're just seeing that they're, they're starting to hit that market. On the flip side of this, we've been talking about what is green, what is not green. Well, natural gas, we talked about this on Friday, and we're seeing it again today. You're breaking out, and you're breaking out really nicely here. So natural gas, energy names, they are setting up. Exxon looks fairly decent here, doesn't it, right? So when these things come to key levels, Levels, it's worth taking a look at. Just disclosure, I have a position in this. We have, we have a alert that went off in the room on it. But I think it's important to note, like people just blew this off, like, oh, it's done. No, no. when they hit key levels, you want to look at them. Also, the power needed for the CEGs of the world. Yeah, did this get ahead of itself? Yeah, I think so, right? You're backing off today. But when you start looking at VST and how that acted today, you still closed over the open. So when you start looking at these nuclear plays like NRG or whatever, whatever way you want to look at these, yeah, maybe they got ahead of themselves. Maybe they pull back and provide better opportunities. But look at uranium. Uranium sitting here, and that's a perfect W breakout. And then you overlay that W breakout 
with your 55, and that's your confirm move on above average volume. So it's not really a function of is this market going to break out or not. Right now, I see rotation working off the overbought, and then we'll figure out what we're going to be when we grow up. Maybe it's into GDP on Thursday. That's it.